Thanks, everyone. Welcome back to The Gay Agenda. On one of our last episodes, we talked a lot about nature versus nurture, and we talked about whether or not uh, folks were you know, born in terms of you know, this particular way with regard to sexual orientation, but we did not talk about the T in LGBT, and we're going to do that today. And I'm going to have Tony take it from here. Today, to help us better understand um, the transgender spectrum and experience, um, we have um, our next guest that I'd like to introduce. He's a lawyer. <laughs> it's true. He is a lawyer by trade um, and a Pisces um, by nature. <laughs> and he's also a professor. And let me just say, he has a 5.0 overall score on rateyourprofessor.com. Um, and there's also a little chili pepper, which means you're hot, hot, hot. Oh, and, that's nice. And let me, let me tell you. I'm tweeting that. You know. <laughs> Um, so without further ado, um, let's uh, welcome um, with glittery fingers and cheers, Owen DMC. Thank you, Tony. I know um, from your experience, you have a lot of beautiful queerness in yes. your history, which is mm -hmm. often, in my case, very rare because I was the only, you know, LGBT person in my family. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, have an array. Can you tell us a little bit about? That. Yeah, definitely. So, um, my maternal grandfather was gay. <gasps> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that must not be named. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, it was really hard. It was really hard. Mm. He grew up in Montana in mm. the 1940s and 50s, and tried to come out and was attempted to be cured by doctors, and mm. you know, just all of those stories that we hear about and. He was really close to my mom. Um, I had a single mother who's beautiful and amazing. Um, of course. And I was her only daughter. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's complicated and wonderful. From a very, very young age, I was the little kid, like the six-year-old screaming, hey, hey, hom ho, ho, homophobia's gotta go, yeah. and the loudspeaker, <laughs> nice. and just marching with my grandpa and my mom. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was really huge. I actually came out as queer, as a queer woman <laughs> in 2001-ish, um, right before my grandpa passed away, actually. So oh, we had this really beautiful moment. Oh, where isn't that nice? I came that out to him, and he was no, like, oh my god, right. let me tell you all these stories. Oh. And so I heard a lot about my grandpa. Um, I don't have a lot of time. I've got to go through the yeah. last 70 years. Lots of things. Um, but, <laughs> But it was good, it was good. Um, so then I came out again as trans um, in, I don't know, about six or seven years ago now. How was that I, with your mom? Like which when you when you came out as trans? It was hard, it was hard, yeah. Um, I think the hardest thing for her was that I wanted to be a man. <laughs> she was like, a man? Like, why? Like, it's a dirty word, you know? Mm, there's um, nothing wrong with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes. Um, I guess one of the questions I, I have is, for people that are, are just trying to understand or navigate this, mm -hmm. there's so many terms, and they're used and sometimes interchangeably, mm -hmm. which, which we know isn't right. Like, can you give us sort of a, a quick yes. sort of definitions of uh, yes. um, how to identify and make people comfortable when, when yeah. they're approaching the issue. Absolutely. I love the Trans 101. I could do it. <laughs> yeah, we're ready. We're ready. Um, <laughs> so, you know, transgender is a term that encompasses anybody who is transgressing gender norms. Gender could be the bow tie, the suit and tie, it could be the heels, it could be the lashes, it could be a whole bunch of things that we it used to express. It could be the express. nail polish. The That's nail polish, true. exactly. So trans folks are people who are moving across and beyond those expectations. And then another term that you'll hear is transvestite. That mm. is a, that is a uh, yeah. Except for Rocky Horror. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's sort of a dated. Yeah, it's a yeah. yeah. So, right. so, so right. people, you know, that's we, actually a good yeah. example. Yeah, right. Right. I think we're used to hearing um, <laughs> tumbleweed. I know. Um, um, well, yeah. we're used to hearing that in you know yeah. popular media where we say like I'm yeah. Jerry Springer or oh, Maury. Yeah. It's a transvestite. It's Absolutely. It, you know, so. And that term, I mean, the term is really derived from um, psychology and from kind of the pathologizing of transgender people. Mm -hmm. So you'll find. In the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, there's a term called transvestite fetishism, which is really mm. where this all began, yeah. the term transvestite. So people who have almost a compulsive disorder of dressing up in women's clothing, mm. cis hmm. non-trans men who dress up in women's clothing for sexual pleasure. Um, it's not a term that comes from our community. That's right. one of the reasons why mm -hmm. it's so offensive. So people might use the term cross-dresser instead or identify that way. 
And that's and more acceptable. More acceptable. And yeah. is that, and how does that differ from transsexual? So uh, someone who's a cross-dresser might just be performing for right. pageantry for exactly. competition, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. We've got RuPaul, who's really mm -hmm. kind of blown mm -hmm. that up. And then another term that's really kind of a new term that you're hearing a lot is genderqueer. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and those are for folks who might identify as another gender. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's kind of breaking apart this idea that there's male, female, that women and men women and men really fit those two um, sex characteristics. And mm -hmm. so folks might identify as genderqueer or an another gender, a third gender. They might use gender neutral pronouns like right. they and them or their right. own name um, as opposed to he and she. Well, tell us a little bit about the transformative justice law project that you started, because that okay. seems to be extraordinary and, yeah. and very much needed. Yeah, yes. yeah. So the project began when I was in law school, the idea of it, the kernel. And then I started working for an organization in New York called the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, mm, which yes. works with um, transgender folks who are street-based, low income, but they only do civil work. And so TGLP was really founded to address the criminalization of gender nonconformity, um, which is something that has existed kind of in the the nation's history. We used to have cross-dressing statues on the books, mm -hmm. even here in Chicago, yeah. um, where we actually criminalized cross-dressing. But now um, we have a lot of transgender folks, particularly transgender women of color, who are winding up in the criminal legal system, so in mm -hmm. prisons and jails. And then it becomes perfectly legal to discriminate against them because of their conviction, not mm -hmm. because they're transgender, or because they're a woman, because they're a person of color. Mm -hmm. um, so this project is really trying to get to those intersecting identities and trying to prioritize criminal defense as a civil rights issue mm -hmm. in our country, which you know we incarcerate more people than any country in the world mm -hmm. um, yes, per do. capita. So we think that it's really a big civil rights issue. So you had talked about your mom and how that was yeah. sort of a um, tough nugget for her for for a minute, and so I wonder, like, what advice would you give for parents who want to be allies and want to be supportive? Yeah. If they can tell that their child is right, sure. or how or they even would even when tell, what would they comes, be looking for? Comes yeah. to them and yeah. comes out. Um, well, I think being trans is a magical gift yes. in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like to reshape and switch some of the rhetoric around being mm -hmm. trans. Like, yes. it's this horrible thing that happens totally. to me that I have to overcome or mm -hmm. that whatever. And instead, it's beautiful, it should be celebrated, right? Mm -hmm. So when our young children, are, our little boys are playing with Barbie or doing their hair in the you know bathroom or whatever it is, that was you like, was me. girl, yeah. you look good. <laughs> I know, I love doing that. Um, and parents should move away from shame, right? And guilt mm -hmm. and saying, oh, this mm -hmm. is weird, this makes me uncomfortable and really examine what that is about ourselves that makes gender fluidity feel weird to us. Sure. Um, and just really celebrate children exploring gender. Um, I think that's the main thing. I would great. recommend. Well, thank you so yeah. much for all the work you're doing. Let's thank Owen Daniel Yes, thank you. Cheers. 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 Thanks for having me on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know. We're going to take a short break. You're watching The Gay Agenda. We're back in a moment. <laughs> Thank you.